All right, today we'll be talking about altars, uh, how to make an altar, what they're used for, and I'll give you a sample altar that I've done. All right, so I got a couple of books here uh, that I'll show you. So basically, first to start off with, uh, this is someone else explained it to me like this, and I thought this was the easiest way to understand it. An altar is basically basically a physical representation of your subconscious mind. So that 90% that you're not using, uh, this is a physical representation of it. So that if you think about it like that, then it, this might be a little bit more easier to uh, to uh, work with. All right. So some of the rules, which is really not, it shouldn't be any rules, but some of the rules and people uh, follow, it should be non-metal. So you want something organic. So a sample example would be wood or stone. I put and or stone because uh, if you just find uh, like a tree trunk and you want to put some marble on top of it, that's an example. So you can use wood and stone. Uh, to make it simple for you, um, you just go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, whatever uh, uh, lumber uh, stores in your uh, town and just get a cabinet. It could just be a regular cabinet. I've showed you this book before. In here, he tells you that you can construct your own. Like I said, you don't have to follow everything in here to a letter, uh, to a T or whatever, but you can. You can make small adjustments. So if you do have this book, which I do recommend, I don't necessarily tell you to do everything in here. It doesn't have to be as detailed. Uh, I think he goes into like when you're uh, constructing your chalice. I'll get to that in a second. That how you just put certain things and broad it. It becomes real technical. Now, it's great if you want to put that much energy into it. It doesn't hurt. What I'm telling you is that you don't have to. Like I said, you can simply go get a cabinet that's already made. Uh, you can do altars on shelves. You can be like a bookshelf that's made out of wood because you may want to have more than one altar. Um, so since I brought that up, let me take this book right here. This is another good book. So you want to research. When I get to my sample, I'll show you uh, why I'm using this. This also talks about altars. But if you decide to do put more than one god or deity, I should say, uh, on your altar, you got to make sure they, they don't mesh. Or, uh, so on and so forth. So this is another one because I'm going to give you a sample of one of my altars uh, using Amon Ra. Amon Ra. Um, so you can get this book by uh, Patricia Turner and Charles Russell. Dictionary of Ancient Deities. Uh, this Encyclopedia of Spirits. Judica Ills. I-L-L-E-S. Uh, I've already told you, showed you the modern magic several times. This is a must-have uh, down on Michael Craig. He explains things simple and uh, he goes step by step with 12 lessons. He also has a uh, frequently asked questions section that you might have some questions about this. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, so like I said, it should be non-metal, organic. Whenever you hear the word organic, you know it means carbon. All right, so what you want also on that, so the second standard should be, it should be the four fantastic elements should be represented. So what I want the four elements is fire, water, air, and earth. So I, I play it on words with the four fantastic. So uh, as you as I told you, all these stories are allegories. Every story, even the comic books, from movies to the Bible stories, all the mythologies, everything is an allegory. So the comic book Fantastic Four is no less. So uh, let's show you. You want to represent the four elements. So fire is represented with the Hebrew letter Shin. I talked about these things before. I just want to keep reminding you so in every video I'm gonna keep reminding you of stuff I've already said so you got the Hebrew letter Shin uh, in the, uh, the book of Daniel the story about Nebuchadnezzar when he had dreams he enlisted Daniel and three of his friends to interpret his dreams all right so one of those people gave him his Chaldean name became Shadrach that's what Shin is Shad and Shin so in a Fantastic Four that's the human torch represents fire so on your altar uh, I mix these up, so let me just point out here. And uh, one of the things you can represent, so whatever you think, whenever you think of fire, you can put this on. I just gave you two samples. It can be a match. It's, it doesn't have to be lit, like a little wooden match with the red thing on the top, an incense, something that, re that makes you think about fire subconsciously. All right? So I wrote this wrong. It should be up here. All right? So the next one is water. The Hebrew letter is mem. That means water. So it's Meshach. So you have Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego. So Meshach... But in the Fantastic Four, that was Mr. Fantastic. Remember, he was flexible. So they, of course, he wasn't made of water, but he, what they had, they showed it the best they could, which is why he's kind of like a rubber man, so he's malleable, if you will, flexible like water. Um, so on your altar, it can be a cup, a chalice, it can be a bowl, something with some water in it, anything that can hold water. 
or anything you think of what subconscious what you think about what these are just samples use what's in your head first thing pop in your head when you think about water then you use that uh, air the, the Hebrew letters Aleph I switched it it's Aleph uh, a better go in the story of Daniel so that that's the invisible woman so you know she was invisible so that's air you can see right through her uh, on the Fantastic Four so something like that you can use a handheld fan even if you got a Liberty fan, electric fan, I just wouldn't put anything electric on my altar. So you can just sit it on there without it being on. So just whatever you think about air. Uh, it can be a picture of an air conditioner. Just be creative. You can also use an incense. So smoke can be uh, used as air. Um, you still want to have four elements. I wouldn't. So four items, I should say. So I wouldn't use an incense and, and, combine, and use it only once. So try to have four, four items on your altar. All right. So I just that's why I put an asterisk. You can use an incense. Say if you use a match for fire, you can uh, have an incense um, for the smoke, for the air. You can also light that. So feel free to light it. All right. So the last one would be earth. So earth becomes the word because this isn't really no Hebrew letter for earth. Um, so these are the three primal elements. So these when they fell down to the tenth or earth or Malkuth on the uh, Kabbalah tree of life. This is this is what it means by word becoming flesh. When those three elements combine, you get the earth, which is the word and flesh. So represented that who represented that was of course Daniel. So Daniel was really a combination of all three of his friends. So in the Fantastic Four, that was the thing that wouldn't remember he was a big rock. So a sample of that can you can use rocks or dirt, something uh, from the earth. Uh, so whatever you can think of, it can be a statue, it can be wood, something organic if you will. So once again, the actual altar is going to be organic or made of something like wood, but you can also use that as one of your items. Now, it's worth pointing out that the thing, his real name, because remember if you know the story, he had an accident and it turns him into that like rocky looking uh, character. His original name was Ben Grimm. The Hebrew word Ben means son of. Grimm is the same word as grammar, so son of the word. So what he's representing is what I told you Daniel is, the word and flesh. That's what we are. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God. We became the word and flesh. We are the word. That's why we use words and letters to spell when do rituals or write. So I talked about that in my Abracadabra video. So it's all a play on words. So Grimm, Ben Grimm, son of the word. So if you go to etymology, look up the word glamour. If you're a True Blood fan, that's what they're doing. When they glamour you on True Blood, they make you forget. So you're basically using words, one enchantment. Uh, it's from the French word grammaire, uh, G-R-A-M-M-A-I-R-E. So you get grammar, stuff like that. So Grim, the Grim Reaper. Because remember, when the Grim Reaper, Grim, Grim Reaper means death. So when you reap the Grim or reap the word in flesh, the word, the flesh goes away. But he reaps the word again. So the Grim Reaper, the, words, the word lives on forever. There's no beginning, no end. But the flesh dies, so you go back to the word. But on, in the physical world, or the thing, or the earth, on earth, you are the son of the word. All right. So that's where you get grimoires. That's the same. So grim grimoires. And the grimoires are, are like something like the uh, Book of Moses, the seven, eighth, and ninth books of Moses. In, in a grimoire, you can look it up. It's any book of spells, or where you can write uh, to show you how to make talismans and so on and so forth. Uh, they don't call the Bible grimoire because you probably don't know the spells are in there. Like I told you, you can do candle magic with the Book of Psalms. So you can conjure up Solomon, uh, you can conjure up demons, angels, whatever. Alright, so that's just a sidebar. Uh, so let me give you my sample. So I'm, I have an affinity towards Amen, uh, the god Amen. Uh, one of the reasons why my mother's name is Ramona. So within her name, Ramona is the name Amen Ra. So you just change the words around Aman Ra and my so I made my son's middle name Aman. Um, so it's the same as these are the same. These are just different uh, variations of the same word. You can spell it with an E, a O, or a U. You can also use a double M. Um, you can also uh, this corresponds with Aten. Later became Aten, uh, A M O U N. So you want to get as much as you can through these books to learn more about this particular deity and then uh, later on in Egypt uh, pantheon they commanded with the sun god Ra Ra just means the head so remember this is your subconscious so in the physical your subconscious uh, is inside your physical head or what the what Jesus called Golgotha or Calvary in the New Testament so you have your physical head so that's Ra because remember Ras Tafarians so Ras Tafarians means the head of Tafari Tafari is just the last name of uh, 
Haile Selassie. So people who follow him think he's Jesus reincarnated. So that was just his original last name, Tafari, and they just put Raz on that because he's the head. Um, so all the stuff is the same. Um, it's, it's, it's all go back to Kemet or Egypt, if you will. So uh, in Hebrew, Aman means teacher, but in Kemet it means hidden or occult. So we're talking about that hidden or that 90% that's subconscious or the underworld. So whenever you hear the underworld, that's what they're talking about. So hell is earth, but the underworld is your subconscious. All right, so you just want to find out all you need. It's just a sample. You want to find out all you want. You have your four elements, your four items on there. Uh, if you want to uh, represent this deity, uh, you might get something, because uh, he's a ram-headed deity, so you're dealing with Aries. So um, uh, something sacred to him would be like the stones would be a lapis lazuli, so you might want to put that gem on there, even if you're just charging it. So this is a book will teach you about... Um, the encyclopedia of spirits about how you communicate with your altar and make sure you're clear with it. Like if you put something on it, you have to communicate as if it's you're talking to your subconscious mind. So you, it may be weird for you, but just know you're talking to your higher self. So uh, you gotta let yourself know that this is either gonna be on it temporarily or how long it's gonna be on it. Um, you can also leave food on there. Of course, they don't eat the food; they eat the essence of the food. So you might see these. The ladies might see this in a nail shop. You always see like the Buddhist people, uh, they leave grapes and stuff down there. You might, oh, that's foolish. That statue is not going to eat the damn grapes. Of course not. But you leave it there and for a certain amount of time, let them draw off the essence. Everything is energy. Remember that. So, um, so like I said, this is why I use Amen Ra a lot. So this is my uh, DTI uh, I deal with mostly. Uh, so you, whenever you're dealing with Aries and in the, in the, in the sake of the traps, like if you want to deal with the traps, it's the trap of Gad. Uh, with uh, the so Gad, the son of uh, Jacob or Israel, uh, so that's the head. Aries is in the head. That's the way you get the word Arian. So you all you're dealing with the spring equinox. So if you're a Mason, you're dealing with the high ram, which is Hiram. So or if you're a Christian, you're dealing with the high lamb, lamb, ram, goat, sheep, all that's the same. So the Lamb of God is Jesus. So you can also uh, if you got a statue or a picture of Jesus that you want to use, um, you're dealing with war. So you're dealing with the spring equinox, which is like around March 21st. So if you're a Hunger Games fan, uh, you know, that's when the Hunger Games always start in all the movies. It's March 21st, the spring equinox. That's when you want to start your wars uh, in March or on a Tuesday. So the day of week, Mars rules Tuesdays. So that's why uh, I think they release movies, no, uh, DVDs and CDs on uh, Tuesdays. Um, so you might want to put some red stuff on there. You know, the point of me bringing all this up, these are different things you can, in addition to your making sure these two needs I met, which is make sure it's not metallic and make sure you have all four items on there. In addition to it, whatever deity you want to try to worship, I mean, not worship, I don't worship the deities, some people do, uh, you can also deal with color. So just find out what, what, what color uh, the deity uh, prefers, stuff like that. You can make that alter that color. If you're not dealing with the colors, you can just make it black, if you will. All right, so throw a black sheet or black cloth on top of uh, the cabinet or something like that. Um, Mm -mm -mm. I think that's it. I'm not gonna make this one too long. It should have been shorter than this. But uh, so that's just a sample of what you would do. You can pick your own deity. You don't even have to have a deity. You can just use it as a as a, a reminder. Just go to the altar and uh, maybe light a candle or incense and just meditate on uh, whatever you're trying to bring out of your subconscious. So you can charge items on that. It's all type of stuff. But I wouldn't be doing you any justice to ramble any longer. So just try to grab those books if you can. Thank you.